Good morning. Welcome to this, our service of worship for Transfiguration Sunday in the church calendar as we remember that special event on Jesus' last trip toward Jerusalem with three of the inner circle of his disciples. And we'll, that, of course, will be the message and story in a little while. We do have a church council meeting today. After a brief pause, uh, after worship, we'll be down in the uh, church uh, living room downstairs. So if you ought to be there, come on down. If you want to be there and you want to attend a council meeting for some reason, you're welcome to. We don't get many takers on that, Scott, but we open the invitation because it is an open meeting. This coming Wednesday marks the beginning of the season of Lent, the 40 days before Easter, other than Sundays, because Sunday cannot be a day of fasting. Every Sunday is a little Easter. You can't fast. Uh, for Ash Wednesday this year, we are going to release a video tube video with the link on the website, the Facebook page, all in email. It'll be released about 7 o'clock Wednesday evening. It will also be on our new podcast channel for those who want to listen to the audio without the, the video attachment. So either way, it'll be available this one, coming Wednesday evening to kick off the season of Lent. The goal is also to have a brief meditation on the podcast channel every Wednesday during Lent, besides the Sunday worship. So we'll have that as well. Am I missing any announcements? Oh, good. Then greet one another, throw a wave, a smile, a hug, a grin, blow a kiss, whatever's in your comfort zone. Tell your sisters and brothers how glad you are that we can gather this morning to hear God's word and sing his praise. We invite you to stand as you are able to join in our call to worship taken this morning from Psalm 99. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. The Lord is great in Zion. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Mighty king, lover of justice, you have established equality. Extol the Lord our God, worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. join in singing, praise the Lord, ye heavens adore him.
Let us join in prayer. O Almighty God, from whom every good gift comes, and who pour out on all who desire it, the spirit of grace and supplication, deliver us when we draw near to you from coldness of heart and wanderings of mind, that with steadfast thoughts and kindled affections, we may worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We're going to hear a story this morning, because we don't have Sunday school, so you're stuck listening to the story with us. I know, it takes a little while sometimes, so I hope, I hope you're okay with that. We're going to sing some good songs too, so that'll help. Peter, who was the one called Simon, he kept messing up with Jesus. He'd say things, get in trouble. And James and John, the two brothers, were invited to go with Jesus away from the other nine. They got a special invitation. And they went up on a hill while they were on their way to Jerusalem. And the three of them saw two other people with Jesus, but there wasn't anybody there. Would that spook you a little? Would that scare you? You see a couple of people who aren't there and they're kind of like ghosts? That would bug me. It bugged Simon. Now, maybe you're easier, not as scared as I am, but I, I don't like horror movies that much because of that. So They see Jesus talking with two other people, and they recognize somehow from all the stories they've heard all their lives that one of these people is Moses. Now Moses had been gone a long, long time. The other one was Elijah, one of the great prophets. And he'd just been gone a long time. But they're both talking with Jesus and comforting and encouraging Jesus about what he had to do for us in Jerusalem. It was so hard. And all of a sudden, Jesus' robe lit up. Like somebody you know, plugged in his USB charger to his robe. Like you plug in a phone or a tablet. Well, he lit up like someone plugged in his tablet. And his robe lit up, and this voice, and it must have been a little bit like the PA system. And this voice says, This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. That would spook me because there was nobody talking. And then the lights faded a little bit and Simon says, oh Lord, it's a good thing we're here. We can build three tents, three lean-tos, and we can put one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And Jesus just kind of shakes his head like he did a lot at Simon. He said, come on, don't tell anybody about this until it's time to tell it. Well, if we have the story in the Bible, you think they told somebody? Yeah, they didn't keep that secret very long, did they? Long enough to get it put in the Bible. So Jesus was shining with God's love. And we are asked in Scripture, we're asked in song, to reflect that light a little bit. So when we do something loving like Jesus tells us to do, we kind of reflect a little of his light. We can shine a little bit in someone else's life. They may not see us light up like we're plugged in, but you bring some light of love of Jesus to, to somebody every time you do something nice like he tells us to do in loving others. Sometimes somebody will do something loving for you, you'll almost see them shine. That's what we're going to talk about and sing about this morning. So we can all, if we work at it, shine a little bit like Jesus did. But we'll read that whole story later. You've got a running start on it now. Thanks for listening so well. I know it's hard to sit here and not go to Sunday school, but we really are glad to have you. We're glad you're here. Thank you.
we have a number of things kind of around the world and local again to join together for in prayer. We continue to pray for the recovery and rescue and, and healing efforts in Syria and Turkey. Um, I got an email because I follow a ministry called Samaritan's Purse. Uh, Billy Graham's son Franklin is the, the president. He was over in Turkey visiting a field hospital that I'm advertising, I guess, for a charity, but Samaritan's Purse is the one that set up a hospital in New York City during COVID. They've taken a field hospital with all the equipment, facilities, and doctors to Syria and Turkey and are treating hundreds of people a day as a Christian ministry in a country that isn't. So their wonderful ministry for which to pray is Samaritan's Purse Field Hospital site that they're conducting there in Turkey. We want to keep in prayer our former president, Jimmy Carter, who in his foundation and ministry and work with Habitat for Humanity has demonstrated his faith in many ways throughout his life, besides the presidency. He's done other Christian things that have let his light shine a bit. And he now enters his final time at home with family. We ask that you keep Jimmy Carter in prayer. Our sister Jean Dixon has gone home and is also in comfort care. So please keep Jean and her family in your prayers as well. Uh, Kathy's niece's husband down in Kentucky uh, had what, what he thought was going to be a couple of stents the other day, and it turns out he's got three full blockages, so he's scheduled for a bypass Wednesday. And he's about 50 years old or, or so, I guess. I'm not sure, but please keep Chris in prayer for that. Um, the ongoing investigation in Michigan, shooting at a university there. A Temple University police officer lost his life last night trying to stop a carjacking. We don't focus on the weapon, we need to focus on the heart. It's the human heart and mind. It's the combination of mental illness and hatred that we need to pray against and about and try to model and help others to, to health and, and goodness instead of illness and evil. And those are, I just cite those as a couple of examples. I'm sure there are other news items that pop into your mind as I, I say it. I'll pronounce it wrong, but Palestine, Ohio, and the troubles that they're having there in the aftermath of a, a train wreck and the, whether they're safe or not being in debate daily. We ask that they are kept safe and the people who have the means and the wisdom to repair that situation get moving on it. And another that we marveled about yesterday at the men's breakfast. Years ago, when I was a young lieutenant and I was giving up my first platoon to another lieutenant, there was another lieutenant named David, another West Pointer a year behind me, who looked so much like me that the, the battalion major ordered me not to shave a mustache nor him not to grow one until he could tell us apart. The platoon, the soldiers were very disappointed. I spoke fluent German. The new David didn't, but he learned quick a good friend of ours, his father was a professor at Asbury College in Wilmore, Kentucky. I'd never heard of Wilmore, let alone Asbury College, back in 1978. But it was a Southern Methodist school. Now they call it Wesleyan Holiness. And out of a routine Wednesday morning worship service, not unlike ours, except maybe for some guitars and praise songs, but in terms of scripture and prayer and, and sermon, it was a routine sermon by a member of the faculty. Now, this is a Christian university and across the street, a seminary by the same name for the preparation of ministers. A routine 45 minutes an hour worship service on a Wednesday morning in their chapel, one of three. And when the service ended, we've experienced this a little here, but not like, not like Asbury. They got a benediction, they're told to go to class, and a, and a bunch of them said, we can't go. The Spirit wouldn't let them out the door. 
They started to sing again. They started to pray again. They gathered on their knees up front to recommit to Jesus Christ. And pretty soon the whole campus is involved and all three chapels are open and they're setting up extra chapels. They're coming across the street from the seminary. Other universities involved. People have traveled from all around the world. And today is day 12 of that worship service. Asbury has a history of revival, but they haven't had one for over 100 years. And they've worked very hard to keep social media, media. They can come to the gate and take pictures of the 3,000 people waiting to get in, but they can't go in. They've had people come say, I've got a word to speak to. Nope. Our regular preachers and faculty will give the message each morning, and the students will lead the prayer. I don't know what that is. But lift that in prayer. Try to imagine. What if the Spirit grabbed us at the benediction in the same way one time we're gathered to worship? Pray for what the Spirit is doing in Asbury. And it's now, by the way, contagious. There are several other major campuses of other schools gathered in their chapels. God's doing something to young people who are hungry and thirsty. Pray that they open their hearts, minds, ears, whatever, open their mouths to sing, and that this, the gospel as it's proved for over 2,000 years continues to be contagious. Praise God and thanks be to God. Are there any other, I'm sorry, I got a little much on that, but it's worth it. Yes, please, hope. So Xander, at Michigan State, putting a face, name, and friend to a situation we mentioned only in the abstract. That's how connections come around. Yes, Katrinka. The Kane family, we prayed before, and we continue to keep them in prayer. Scott. Nephew Josh taken to a hospital in Maryland with an allergic reaction. The scary part being trying to find the allergen. That, that's spooky when one's having that bad reaction. You haven't figured out what's triggering yet. So we pray that get found. I missed anybody. I see a great big wave in the balcony. Yes, dear. Brian is getting married today in Taiwan. I thought he, never mind, second time around. We got a nephew who had, I guess, the civil ceremony of getting married. And now he's getting married at his wife's home, Taiwan. So that's going to be a, a colorful, interesting, great day of celebration. Some of the family could travel. Uh, we're here. So we'll pray for that from here. So for Ryan and his bride. I probably couldn't pronounce her name right if I knew it. Anyway, got some great joys. We've got some great burdens. Some things very local and some things distant. Let's join our hearts and minds and come to the foot of God's mercy seat in prayer. Heavenly Father, we hardly know where to start, so we start by praising you. Thank you, Lord God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all the ways that you relate to us and all the ways you are our God, the ways you gather this, your church, and your church in all settings. Thank you. We praise you. We love you. As you've loved us so greatly even before we knew you. Thank you. We lift up in care and in need the Kane family, Josh, Xander, and all the others at Michigan State, Gene, Jimmy. Chris, the people of Palestine, all the people at Michigan State, the people at Temple University and other places that, that senseless violence, Lord, whether it's illness or evil, we ask you to bind it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant protection in all settings, we pray. We thank you for those who are lending help 
even while we pray for spiritual comfort for those in Turkey and Syria, we thank you for those who have not just the means, the willingness and the courage to bring in whatever help they can. Give you thanks for Ryan and his bride and a new family being affirmed there in Taiwan today. And Lord, we marvel and wonder at what has started at a simple chapel service in Wilmore, Kentucky. Bring the Spirit, Lord. Give us the courage to, to cry out, Come, Lord Jesus. Lift hearts, lift minds, heal relationships, draw people to you. And Father, if you choose a dramatic way to do it, don't let that uh, cause us to shy off, please. But lift hearts and minds there around the world, right here in this place in Sutton. Lift spirits to you, Lord, in whatever way you have in store. And let us not make our hearts heavy or our minds closed to being so lifted and so opened in the glory of Jesus Christ. Pause for a moment to lift those prayers that we haven't yet named aloud before one another. Lord, we each ask humbly for ourselves as well. Open our hearts and minds to your spirit, your love, your mercy, grace, and wisdom. Bless this household of faith that we would always reflect your word, the gospel of your son, your love, and your glory. Watch over all who serve, close to home or in distant places, grant them Skill, strength, wisdom. I keep them safe to bring them home to loved ones. Lord, we lift all our prayers in loving trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray together as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When we gather in God's house, he invites us to present a gift, not just for the church, but for the love and the work that the church can then show to God's glory to others. We will now receive our morning offering.
Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless these gifts and all the gifts of love, of time, and of talent. Loving work for the church through serving you and serving one another. Bless these gifts to that continued service in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join in singing Beautiful Savior.
first scripture lesson today is from Exodus chapter 24, verses 12 through 18. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let them go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of God dwelt on Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on, t- on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain, and Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Our gospel message this morning comes from Matthew, chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. And after six days, Jesus took him, Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. I'm going to ask you something that's counter to all logic in a church. But if you like to sing, and you want to sing the chorus to Shine, Jesus, Shine, and your phone is logged onto our internet or you've got a good signal, look up Shine, Jesus, Shine lyrics at some point before we sing the last hymn. I'll confess that we missed a page in the bulletin, so Eric and I are going to pound out the chorus, and if you've looked up the lyrics, you can help us. I know, I'm asking people to get out cell phones during a sermon. Have you ever heard that one before? (laughs) It won't happen often. However, can I tell a groaner? Moses was the first one to download data from the cloud to tablets. (laughs) There's a point to that. I know it's bad. (laughs) But it puts the image in your mind, doesn't it? Because... The reason we pair this with the story of the transfiguration is that it's recorded that when Moses came down off the mountain, he'd been in the presence of God. And he wasn't allowed to see God's face. It said he spoke face to face with with God as, as he would with another man. He's the only one ever to do that except Jesus. Except that he wasn't really allowed to see God's face, we're told, because he couldn't in this life and live. We'll see God's face in good time. So when Moses came down off the mountain, besides that nasty scene about breaking the first set of tablets because Aaron had led the people astray, and you can picture that from a grand movie if you want to. But when he got the tablets right the second time, he had to have a, a special tent where he met with God about the tablets. And every time he met with the elders afterwards, he had to wear a full veil, not a sneeze screen. A full veil. I called it a holy sunburn. His voice, his face was so lit up from being so close to God, people couldn't look at him. It hurt. A little preview, if you will, maybe, of the transfiguration that plugged Jesus in like someone plugged in his USB charger to his robe. 
that lit him up. So we had a little bit of a precursor when Moses, Moses is called the law giver. I would call him the law bearer. God gave the law. God inscribed the tablets. Moses got to spend 40 days on the mountain twice in the clouds to get it right with the people and bring the heart of the law, what we call the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue, down to the people. Well, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. It's fitting we read this now and, and remember this event now because we start the 40 days of Lent on Wednesday. We start our journey towards Jerusalem. We start our preparation for Palm Sunday, the joyful entry. Some traditions, that's Passion Sunday. They remember it very differently. We save that for, for Thursday night of that week when we remember the Last Supper and then Christ's Passion. And on Friday, when some of us take the opportunity to pray, either with what will be available online or, or to come here during the three hours during which Jesus died on the cross. That's what Jesus is heading for. A little Lent, if you will, a preparation time. And when we're headed for something like that, we see here that God does some things for Jesus. He sends the three of his inner circle. Peter and the brothers James and John have been several times now and will be again in Gethsemane invited to be a little closer to Jesus than the other nine. Nine is almost too big a squad to have a, a tight circle in it, so he's got his three, I don't know what you'd call them, the three closest in the group that got to see some things before the other disciples and had great responsibility then in the early church when Jesus had gone to be with the Father. He takes him up a mountain. I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase a mountaintop experience. It may be a, a spiritual retreat. It may be a very special worship. It may be Anything very special in your life, we call it a mountaintop experience. Here's the ultimate, or the penultimate, the next to the, next to the ultimate. And he's transfigured before them, and he shines like the sun. His clothes are lit up, and there's Moses and Elijah. Call it in spirit. The German word for spirit is geist, ghost. Maybe they were ghostly appearances, but... God sent Peter, James, and John as, as aides de camp to Jesus. Then he sends the law bearer. We heard just a week or two ago that Jesus said, not one iota, not one yod. We don't have letters in English as small as the Greek iota. It's one stroke of a pen. We have to go back and dot the I. The Greeks didn't. The letter Yod is another stroke of the pen. But in Hebrew, first letter of the word for God in Hebrew, by the way, too. But the tiniest letters, he said, not the tiniest letter will disappear from the law until I have fulfilled it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fulfill it. So here's the law bearer. Come on, Jesus, I had my part of the torch. I'm here to comfort you as you bear is God himself the hardest part of the torch. Elijah stands to represent all the prophets. Isaiah may get the longest book, but Elijah got the greatest rep out of the books. Elijah was the one, remember, who, who killed hundreds of prophets of the pagan deity Baal, and Queen Jezebel turned on him, and the poor guy ran like a rabbit. because She threatened to take his life, and God sustained him. And he heard the voice of God, a still small voice on a mountaintop. Another mountaintop experience. And remember, a prophet isn't to say, this is what's going to happen. He might, or she might. The prophet's trademark was, thus saith the Lord. He's a mouthpiece. He had to speak to Jezebel and her husband and say, evil. The Lord says this is evil. The Lord says repent and return to people, to God. We had a law bearer talking to the law fulfiller. 
We've got one who says, thus saith the Lord. And when Jesus speaks, he says, I am the Lord speaking. Okay, I'm twisting the Greek a little, but that's the way he speaks. He speaks as the I am. He speaks as the God. So earthly aides de camp are sent who think their job is to build a tent so they can stay there. Jesus knows he can't stay on the mountaintop. He has to go through the valley of what we call Holy Week. He has to go through what he has to do in Jerusalem for our sakes on his way to the cross. So God, if you will, on this mountaintop shows Peter, James, and John, and Jesus says, save the story until it's complete, then tell it. He shows the trajectory of giving God's law, God's foundation, of giving a prophet to speak, thus saith the Lord, out of and about and to return to that law. And now they are completing their trajectory and comforting and, 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 and confiding in and, and advising Jesus, if you will, carry the torch to the finish line, master. Finish the trajectory that God started in us. And you, Lord, as God yourself, are going to finish and carry that torch. And he transfigured Jesus and made the dramatic announcement about, this is my son, listen to him. Peter, James, and John are entrusted. Can you imagine going back to the other nine and not being able to tell what happened? I'd burst. I mean, I, I'd, I'd be talking to myself, I'd be chewing my lip. I, I, probably, probably talk in my sleep and say it anyway and, and bust the confidence. I don't know. It'd be tough. But when the message was complete, obviously they told it or we wouldn't be sharing it this morning. The Father transfigured Jesus. He affirmed him. He gave him a light to shine. In another place we read not too long ago, Jesus told us, let your good works shine before your Father in heaven that others will see his light and come to it. That's why I told our, our two youngest congregants this morning, that light can reflect from us. It's not our light, but we can reflect it for Jesus. We can reflect that love. We can reflect the, the great commission he gives us to go out and serve and speak in his name. Sending the Holy Spirit like he's doing in Wilmore, Kentucky and other campuses now to transfigure us and light us up as he did his son on top of that transfiguration. And as he sent comfort to his son through the words of the law and the words of the prophets, we have God's word to continue to comfort and encourage us to cross our finish line, to carry that light, to carry that love, to finish, as Paul called it, the race set before us, to endure. He sent Peter, James, and John to offer to build a tent. They didn't get it yet. But he sent Moses and Elijah. From their rest in death, he sent them to encourage Jesus, how much does he send their word also and the word of Christ himself, the example of Christ himself, to encourage and lift, lift us up. In our baptisms, we are told that we have died to the world and risen as new creatures in Christ. We, too, are offered a transfiguration of our lives. The symbol is baptism. The reality is salvation in Christ the sustaining comfort is the Holy Spirit. Let's let ourselves, according to God's will, be transfigured into true followers in every way and every day of Jesus Christ. I keep talking about songs. The third verse of the Battle Hymn of the Republic, how's that for trivia? In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. 
Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. We invite you to rise as you're able, gather your wind, and even if you're singing ooh with us, sing it out. Join us for coffee, please. Some of us are going to be scurrying around doing other things. You may have to greet a deacon on the way out. I've got some responsibility to somebody else this morning, several things in a row. So it's good to see all of you. Let me throw a hug at you anyway. 
But find the coffee pot and some goodies this morning as well. Heavenly Father, shine your light on us, in us, and through us. Transfigure us in the love of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.